friends, welcome back to my channel. Sass here. I'm here to do part one of the three part tell all of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After. They need to change that name. You know, tell all. What did what did they tell us? Okay? They just talked about the season, things we already know. Nothing much happened. We have a couple of, you know, zings here and there. But, child, this does not need to be three parts. It don't. It does not. But, anyway, I guess they need to stretch it out. So, let's talk about it. Sean Robinson, she is the host of these reunion slash tell-alls. And she looked beautiful. Did she look good, y'all? I tell you what, quarantine done her good. Okay, she's always been pretty. But she just looked so pretty. She wasn't overdone. Her hair was cute. That little outfit was cute. The color of that outfit looked great against her skin tone. She looked fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Paul and Karini, they didn't make the festivities. Of all people who needed to be at this tell-all, because we are, it is called tell-all, it should have been Paul and Karini. Paul, are you abusive? Paul, did you um, drug up Karini? Paul, did you get Karini intentionally pregnant so she won't leave you? Paul, did you um, not give her birth control? Paul, all these questions. But I guess none of them can answer it because I guess it's a legal issue. I guess. I mean, I guess. They talked about Andre and Elizabeth for a good 40, 45 minutes. Was it 40 minutes, y'all? Too long. They drugged them out too long. Oh, my God. So, let's get started. Everybody was there. Nobody got dressed up. Nobody did anything special. Everybody looked the same, child. Some men didn't get the haircut that needed haircuts. Some women just rolled out of bed and said, here I is. But, honey, when I tell you, let it stop. Man, I, her boobs, honey. They are up high. Sitting high tits. My God. So, of course, we start off with, you know, Sean telling everyone, hey, how you doing? And then we get to the screaming and the yelling and the fussing and then Colt, you know, he has said that he haven't seen Jess in 10 months. He haven't talked to her, haven't seen her in 10 months. So, it's been 10 months since this, you know, taping, well, since the show. And this tape in 10 months. Wow. Wow. So anyway, and so Sean was like asking about, oh, well, you know, how does it feel to see Jess again? And Jess, how does it feel to see Colt again? And, you know, Colt was like, listen, she's like a stranger to me now. She is like a stranger to me. And Larissa, I don't even recognize her child. And, you know, her, her chest done plumped up a little bit. Of course, Debbie, you know, she's laughing. She was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Larissa says that she wants more things done. She wants her butt done. She wants liposuction. And she wants a tummy tuck. That's what she said. Okay. Now, Jess, she proceeds to scream at um, Colt saying that he's a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. Honey, really, that's all she said throughout this whole um, reunion. You're a liar and you're a cheat. That's what y'all. So then Mama Debbie said that, um, you know, that Larissa and um, Jess was in some type of hate me now cult club. <laughs> and of course, Larissa, she was like, you ain't got no morals, you B. You ain't got no morals, you bitch. <laughs> oh, Lord, Sean was probably in the background going, how long do 
do I have to listen to them scream at each other? Meanwhile, Jess is screaming, la, la. I don't know how it got involved, but somehow Andre got involved in this argument. Something about when she called Colt jail, uh, uh, fat. I don't know how Andre got involved in the fight. But Andre done got himself involved in the fight. And then he brought up her kids. Brought up, um, why she doing all this plastic surgery. Called her Michael Jackson 3.0, honey. It was a mess. And then here comes Larissa. Larissa said, at least I got a job. At least I got a job. Don't you worry about my kids. Don't worry about my kids, okay? I send money to my daughter. Don't you have three kids, Larissa? I mean, you said you send money to your daughter. What about the other two? Am I wrong? Don't she have three kids? Okay, all right. I guess the other two kids are just eating kibbles and bits. But she done told Andre, I got a job. You ain't got no job. I got a job. Now... Larissa, she done went and she done got fired from TLC. F I R E D, you're fired. She done got fired. We know that she was having some type of an arrest or non arrest, you know, lack of communications, just a whole mess of ice. Okay, that was recently. And now she's fired. Well, I'm not going to miss Larissa. Y'all know how I felt about her. I don't care. Okay, but. Um, she, um, but she does like this cam video. She's a cam girl, right? Is she not a cam girl? Apparently, she made a hundred thousand dollars doing cam work. So, hey, you keep doing cam work. You keep being with pitiful, pathetic Eric and live your life. Where they at, y'all? In Colorado, Utah, they in one of those states, child. How long? Do you think it's going to be until we hear about an arrest? How long? I'm predicting some type of domestic dispute between Eric and Larissa. How long do you think it's going to be? Six months, three months, a year? I'm predicting we will hear something about that. There is no way them two is living under a happy home. How did they live under a home of lies? And it will come crumbling down. All right, now, let's move on with those, okay? So, Angela and this mask. Angela said that the reason why she's wearing this mask is because she has some dental work done, and it ain't looking pretty. What did you do to your mouth that you have to wear a whole mask and keep it up? What? I mean, your teeth must have been ragged, jagged, and all falling out. Why do you have on a mask for dental work? They done pulled some of your teeth, Angela. <laughs> Angela got some of teeth, y'all. Some right here, some right there, none right here, none right there. Honey, that's what it is. Is that why you covering up your mouth? You got gapes. Okay. Ain't no wrong with it. It ain't no wrong with it. Just show us, Angela. Just show us. Show us that you can park a car in between your teeth. Go ahead and show us. That's what you do. Because you're so real and you're so big and bad. Because see, when I saw the mask, I thought, Lord, she done lost her mind. I thought maybe she had got some lip work done. I thought maybe she done inflated her lips like a Larissa. I mean, we seen what she did to her etched sketch chest. Honey, that's just a catastrophe. So what you do to your mouth? Ooh, child. Just as long as you getting it done, girl. Just as long as you getting it done. Now let's move on. All right, child. Let's talk about Andre and Libby. Ooh, child. They, 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 they were too long on this tell-all. They were on there for way too long. All right? Now the C-19 is happening. And honey, they getting on each other's nerves. They are underneath the roof of each other, and they are getting on each other's nerves. Is Andre working, y'all? Well, of course not. He's not working. He ain't going to work. He ain't trying to work. He ain't trying to find no job, and that's that on that. He has already told y'all, this is who I am. I am a stay-at-home dad. This is what works with me and Libby, okay? She goes to work. I stay home with the baby, and we ain't got to pay. 
pay for child care. Side note, did y'all notice how Mama Debbie was caping for him? Captain Save a Home. Mama Debbie, every time when Andre said so, she was like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, that's true, that's true. Every single time, Mama Debbie, did you get a hard on for Andre? What's going on here? But there is some beef between Elizabeth and Larissa. What's going on there? Why don't Elizabeth and Larissa like each other? Child, it's just a whole mess. So anyway, Andre said, listen, I am happy where I'm at. Ain't nothing going to change. And so Libby was like, yes, but you have potential. Okay. We had an understanding. And yes, we discussed about you staying at home. But you can do so much more. And then we had a conversation about a man's work or what does a man supposed to do? A man's job. Did y'all hear Tanya? I don't really care for those gender titles, those gender roles. I don't even know what a man's work even means. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. You don't know what a man's work supposed to be. You sit beside said You don't even know what, what type of conversation to have. You don't even know what type of relationship you're in. Are you in one with y'all's confused self? Shut up, Tanya. Shut up. So, what does it mean, man's work or a man's job? Well, let me tell you what it means to me, in my opinion. You have a job. Unless you are disabled, unless you have mental issues, unless you are laid off, there is no reason why you shouldn't have a job. That's just me. Now, I know the pandemic hit. I know that. A lot of people lost their jobs. I know that. I'm talking about prior to C-19. None of these men was working except for Colt. I know Colt lost his job laid off during C-19. I'm None of these men had jobs. None of them. So, if you are staying at home, since there's no gender roles, if you are staying at home and you're not working, then my house should be spotless. You need to scrub. You need to wash dishes. You need to mop, sweep, vacuum, clean the outside and the inside. That's what you do. You're not working. And we don't have man's work or woman's work. So everybody doing the job, right? My house should be so clean that you should lick off of the floor. How many of these men you think do that? Honey, we know a Sulu, honey. He has a hard time washing the dish. And he picking up apples. It's a struggle. We'll get to him in a minute. But that's just my opinion on it. Okay, I don't want to hear nothing about this, you know, man's, uh, uh, man's work or job or whatever. A man know what he's supposed to do. Just like a woman should know what she's supposed to do. Let's move on. So here comes Libby's family, honey, the three stooges child. All right. And they don't see anything wrong with how they acted over at Moldova. Nothing whatsoever. They said, listen, we talked about the food because the food was nasty. We ain't never seen no food like that. Okay? It was nasty. And so here comes Andre. Andre was like, you don't never eat bacon. They said that wasn't bacon. They said that was not bacon. That was fat. We ain't eating fat. And so Andre's like, it's bacon. And so Jim was like, it wasn't bacon. Bacon got meat on it. I'm not going to eat a bunch of fat. And then, of course, you know, Chuck. Chuck says that he don't feel bad about saying it's peasant food. He said because as Americans, that's the food that we throw away. We don't consume that food. So, no, I don't see anything wrong with, with it. Again, Andre brings up the bacon. My thing is, I seen things at that little uh, gathering that was more than, you know, bacon. There was bread. There was cheeses. There was vegetables. There was fruit. There was prosciutto. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff you could have ate. But you decided to just 
beam in on the fact. Of course, they talk about how aggressive Andre was to Libby during the whole, you know, fight between Andre and, and Charlie. And so, you know, Chuck was like, I just cannot believe how you was talking to my daughter. The disrespect. You was screaming. You was yelling. And then we were standing there at the restaurant while you and Libby left. And I had to pick up the bill. Papa Chuck said I had to pay for everybody because you left. Well, you should have known that, Papa Chuck. You know good well Andre and Elizabeth wasn't going to pay for no bill. So Elizabeth said there was no other way. She said that Andre was so upset she ain't never seen him cut a shine like this. And the only solution was to leave with them. It was no calming him down. Mm -hmm. And she says, yes, Andre can be aggressive. She has never seen that side, but she has seen him get upset. But this night, he was just over the top. And she didn't appreciate it. So, of course, Andre, okay, he didn't apologize for how he acted. The screaming, the yelling, the foot stomping. He didn't care about that. He says that it was all their fault. They the ones being nosy, asking all kinds of questions. I done told him to shut his mouth. So, he started all this. Andre don't feel bad in the least. He didn't apologize. He ain't going to apologize. He did say that he going to work on himself. Baby. So then they talked about the Ireland and the Moldova. So they brought in um, the friend, um, Marcel, and the brother. All right. Bottom line is the brother don't really know why um, he left Moldova to go to Ireland. He don't know why he got thrown out of the country. But he do know that it wasn't for anything bad. Because Andre's not capable of that. So, in all honesty, he don't know why. Marcel said that Elizabeth's family is nosy. And what Andre did was justified. Said that her, her, his family done come up in there, cut a shine, done embarrass everything that they love, everybody that they, they love, and was just too through. Okay? Too through. Okay? So, Andre should have went upside his head. Quit asking questions that's none of your business. That's basically what Marcel said. So, right now, we still don't know what the, diff what the problem is between... So, right now, we still don't know. Why did he leave Moldova to Ireland other than the corruption of the police force? Whatever. I'm tired of hearing about it. So then we start talking about drunk Charlie and how he acted at the wedding. And so Charlie said, ah, 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 alcohol. Blame it on the ah, 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 alcohol. Honey, he said, listen, I was tall from the floor. <laughs> I was at the wedding. Okay? I got drunk. I don't really know what else to tell you. Okay? I did. So, oh well. So then they bring up money and paying for the wedding. Now, this was a little zinger. Now, do y'all remember back early on into the episodes when um, Andre said that Libby's dad needs to pay for this wedding, first of all, because it's custom, customary, but first of all, because it's tradition, but he said, I paid for the first wedding. He said, I paid for... Uh, me and Elizabeth's um, first wedding because, you know, he had some money to save up. That's what Andre said. So I was under the impression that he paid for the for the whole wedding. Come to find out, he didn't pay for all that first wedding. He partially paid for it. And then Libby can talk about, well, he paid for a bunch because of the money coming in from Ireland. You, you know, you pay for a lot. Here, I thought that you paid for the whole thing. No, 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 you didn't. Papa Chuck paid for part of that wedding. And he paid for the full second wedding. And he paid for uh, somebody else's wedding. Jen said, Daddy didn't pay for my wedding. And he did not pay for, you know, Charlie's wedding. All right? So you done paid for three weddings. You keep 
keep keep giving to Libby and Andre. And we out here eating skibble, uh, kibbles and bits. It just seems like to me there's a whole lot of resentment between the siblings, um, Elizabeth and um, Papa Chuck. I don't really think it really has anything to do with Andre being a moocher. I think that it has to do with Elizabeth being spoiled, okay, getting her way, getting things paid for, and they don't have that same, I guess that same connection or the same, I guess, ATM that they have to their dad. That is the root of the evil. That's where the resentment comes in at. Right. And so the kids, well, uh, Elizabeth and Andre take advantage of Papa Chuck. Okay. Of course, they were like, absolutely not. And so Papa Chuck was like, well, I hope not. Well, what do you think? What do you think? So Jen tells a story that Andre came up to her and said, I have your dad wrapped around my finger. That's what Jen said, Andre said. Of course, Andre said, absolutely not. I didn't say that. Then he says, well, I don't remember saying that. You know, I was drinking. It was at their wedding, I do believe, their first wedding. And so here's Libby. Did you say that? Did you say that? You didn't say that, right? He wouldn't say that. Jen said, he said, Andre called Jen a liar. What do y'all think? I think he said it. I absolutely believe that Andre said that he might have been drunk. That makes me believe it any, even more. What do they say about a drunk mind? So I believe that Andre, um, you know, said that. But anyway, then they start talking about, you know, Andre possibly working for Elizabeth's dad and all this bunch of mess. They spent too much time on these two. Y'all, let's move on. All right, let's talk about Angela and Michael. I don't even know why they put this little segment in, but I guess they needed to. So, Angela and Michael, he still ain't over here in the United States. You know, but he's doing okay during the C-19. Okay, he's doing all right. I guess he's doing just like everybody else is doing, honey. Just trying to live, trying to survive. All right. Then there's Angela. Angela says that it's hard not having him over there during the C-19. But, you know, she is still capable of controlling every piece of his life, even without being there with him. See, she got control over this man, and he is hundreds and thousands of miles away from her. She says that when he goes to the bathroom, he better have his phone. Trust issues. No, no, I, I don't really think it's trust issues. I think that it's controlling. Insecure issues. Yes, we all know the story about the BJ. We all know that story, child. And it still has Angela in the tizzy. Well, you didn't have to take him back. You chose to take him back and control him because of your insecurities. And Michael don't get no type of feeling sorry for me, okay? I don't feel a bit sorry for Michael. You, you put up with this woman for years and her antics and her behavior. You put up with it. So I don't feel a bit sorry for you. You're a fool. A fool. A fool. But that's who you married. That's who you married. You don't win. And you don't marry this woman. And you still haven't made it over to the United States. <laughs> you don't marry this woman. And you still ain't working. You still can't poop in peace. You got to hear this woman squalling and scapping and yapping all this time. And you still ain't over here in the United States. Oh, well, that's who you chose. 
So then, of course, they're bringing up the whole strip club and the bachelor and bachelorette party. So Sean was like, Michael, knowing how crazy and backwoods and insecure and controlling your wife is, why did you take her to a strip club? Of course, she didn't say that. I just added that in. She wanted to say, Sean, you wanted to say that, didn't you, girl? I know you did. It's okay. I would have. But anyway, so of course, Michael, he was like, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. We was just here to have a good time. Did you have one, Mike? Did you have a good time while she was twerking up against you, child? Honey, she looked like a brick building just. Honey, she couldn't even get together. But then you saw them marshmallow buttocks, honey. You lost your mind. You almost lost your head. But of course, Angela. Angela says that he don't need to be looking at other women. He don't need to be around other women because it's all about me. Okay. See, <clears throat> he done cheated before. He done did the little BJ before. He done lied before. See, he's a liar. And see, that's why I need to keep tabs on. Am I going to talk any more about Angela and Michael in this episode? So then they talk about the wedding. Sean says that Angela looked absolutely beautiful. Okay, we've already covered that. All right. And then Angela, she got emotional because, you know, her mom, and she gets up and she leaves the room. Let's move on. <clears throat> I done spent too much time on Angela and Michael. Too much time. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about Colt and Jess. Now, this is going to be real quick. <clears throat> Jess, throughout this whole uh, part of their uh, episode, it was Colt is a liar, Colt is a cheat. How about Colt sitting there looking like a rag? Coach, you couldn't get a haircut. Your mama couldn't cut your hair. Coach looked like he done lost some weight though. But honey, that hair. Coach, it's just a disaster. And then how about Cole kept calling um, Jess sweetheart? Listen here, sweetheart. Oh no, sweetheart. I think you got the story wrong, sweetheart. I was like, Coach, if you don't shut up. He says that Jess caused the demise of their relationship. He said that Jess was manipulative. He says that Jess basically is a whore. He says, you didn't even know my last name before you threw it on me. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm a man. Of course I'm going to take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've been spreading it like butter on toast. Cole was all one, wasn't he? And then, of course, Debbie. Debbie done ran her mouth. Jess done told Debbie to shut up. Larissa done told Debbie to shut up. So here comes Debbie. I'm not taking this abuse. And she gets up and she walks off. Nobody missed her. Nobody missed her, child. Coach said the reason why he sent his little itty bitty teeny weedy peeny penis to them other women is because, listen, him and Jess was arguing all the time. He was lonely. That is how he shows his affection. Is by showing his penis to strangers. Come on now, Coach. Really? And he had no qualms about saying it. And then Larissa says, oh, really? You a liar, you a cheat. Larissa says that while they were married, some girl out there in social media sent her receipts about Colt sending his penis to her when she was married to um Colt. Just a whole catastrophe here. Then Jess said that Colt had been sending pictures during their relationship, before their relationship, after their relationship, Jess also accused Colt of sleeping with Vanessa. Okay, so here is Colt. Now, Colt started off with a lie. Sean said, did you have sex with Vanessa? Well, we already know he did because he told it. He's sitting up there talking about, no, I 
right? Um, no. Uh, and then here's Debbie that made her way back to lie. She could talk about clock. <laughs> Stupid ass. Mother and son's stupidity is just out of control. So then, of course, he says, yes, I slept with Vanessa. Okay. He said, I slept with Vanessa before me and you got a relationship, Jess. And I slept with her after the relationship. Jess said, you lied. You slept with her during the relationship. He says, <laughs> honey, he was all just, all discombobulated, huh? Side note, did y'all see how Sinjin was looking during the whole conversation about sending um, the penis pics? When they were talking about Colt sending those penis pics to um, those strangers, did y'all notice how the camera cut to Sinjin and Tanya? Sinjin looked like he was just all just disturbed by this and mad. I mean, was that an editing glitch? What was that about? Why did Sinjin have that type of reaction? It was just upsetness on his face. I was like, ooh, this is interesting. But anyway, so Sean says that Vanessa's name has been thrown around and Vanessa will come on soon. So we're going to have Vanessa. We're going to have Colt. And Sean is going to ask, did you two sleep together while Colt was with Jess? What do y'all think the answer is? That's it. That's all I can give on Colt and Jess. That is it. Y'all, I'm just hitting the hot spots. Let's move on. All right, last and least, let's talk about Sulu and Kalani. Now listen. All right, as we know, Kalani kicked Asulu out. Take your feet to the street. Go to your mama's house. So they didn't know if Asulu was going to come for the tell-all or not. Well, right before it starts, who walks in? Asulu. Okay. And so Sean was like, oh, Asulu, I'm surprised you're here. We didn't think that you was going to come. And he was like, I didn't either. I didn't think I was going to make it either. I'm shocked too. So Kalani was like, I'm very shocked. Okay. So Sean said, give us an update. Kalani says that Sulu just showed back up. Like a lost dog. He just showed back up. <laughs> so she let him in. All right. Uh, Sulu said the reason why he came back is because he missed his family. No, Asulu, you came back because your mama and your evil sister was getting on your nerves. Y'all know every five minutes they were going money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Money. He got tired of hearing it because he ain't got any. <laughs> so anyway, they said that they are working on their relationship. All right? It is strained. Okay? Asulu and Kalani's relationship is strained. All right? Now, this whole pandemic is going on. So what does Asulu do? He goes and he plays volleyball six days a week. And apparently he takes dance class. He's an instructor. So you mean to tell me during a pandemic, when everybody's supposed to be staying at home and, you know, keeping everybody in your family safe, a Sulu decides to play volleyball, not working six days a week, y'all, not working six days a week at the part of the part-time job, he decides to play volleyball and be a dance instructor. And so Kalani clocked him. Kalani said, you can't be going out there in the world playing volleyball during the pandemic and then come home around me, my family, and my babies. We could get sick. So Asulu done lied to her and said that he wore a mask at all times. She was like, you lying. You lying. See, you're so slow that when you FaceTime me, you ain't got no mask on. Only thing I see is sweat. Not now, mask. Everybody behind you ain't got no mask. But you're going to tell me that you're being cautious with the mask on when I'm seeing that you're not. You're lying. You're irresponsible. Kalani, this is what you married, girl. This is <laughs> this is what you married. So y'all know what Sulu said. Honey, I couldn't wait for this knowledge to drop, honey. I knew we was about to get a gym. He says that he don't see nothing wrong with going to play volleyball six days a week during the pandemic. People go to the grocery store. 
That's what he said. That's his justification to going out there and doing something meaningless and getting their family infected to equating it to going and get some groceries. Man, oh man. You know, when I go to the grocery store to get essentials, I'm not over there hitting the bread to somebody else across the aisle. We're not spiking beef. We're not over there putting the lamb chops. We're not over there putting the onions. We're not over there hitting onions back and forth to each other. We're not diving on the ground for potato chips. A Sulu is ridiculous. Kalani, this is who you marry. Of course, a Sulu don't see anything wrong with going to the um, playing volleyball during the pandemic because he didn't see nothing wrong with taking his family to Samoa to a whole measles outbreak that was killing children. What do y'all not understand? We are dealing with a simpleton. Yes, that's what we're dealing with. Well, then they brought on the sister and the mama and we all know, I'm not gonna get into details about this. We know how the sister and the mama feel about a Sulu, okay? The sister said, I wouldn't expect anything any different. He a fool. And the mama said that he's selfish, period. He's irresponsible, period. He's a dumbass, period. That's what the mama said. The mama said, listen, my husband is out there working. My husband wanted me to go out there with him because of a Sulu putting me at risk. But I couldn't do it because I'm not going to be staying in no hotel, motel, holiday, not in. This is the same as being here with a Sulu stupid step. It'll be a cold day before I let that man come up in my house endangering my health because he out there playing volleyball and dancing. Talk about he make a little bit of money dancing. How much money you making a Sulu? Just like Kalani said, it ain't enough to be, be to be putting us at risk. He ain't making no money. And who is dancing during the pandemic? A O C 19. Come on. A O C 19. Who twerking during the pandemic? Who doing the touchy roll during the C-19? If you don't go somewhere and stick your hand in the oven, I can't stand it, y'all. Oh, my God. So then they heed and they hawed and they talked about how Sulu is rude, disrespectful, don't call Kalani a B-word. We all know this. We all know this. We know what a Sulu brings. Hardly nothing. So they done brought up the mama and the evil sister. Okay, so we all know what they bring. All right, the mama, of course, says that a Sulu supposed to send them money. And so Kalani's mama said, You know what? Yes, I agree with that. Yes, we still send money, but we send what we can. And they accept it, and that's that. You don't be going talking about I want a thousand dollars and expect to get it. You get what you get. And you be appreciative of that. Of course, you know, Mama Sulu is just looking like that. Then the evil sister. She starts talking and then Kalena's sister done got involved. And honey, this was a good little interaction. Kalena's sister said, how much you see? How much money you send, evil sister? And so the evil sister said, that's none of your business. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This ain't got nothing to do with Kalina. This is about a Sulu and us. Kalina ain't got nothing to do with this. It's about his money and how he's supposed to take care of his family. It's tradition. So don't you be worried about how much I take care of the family. It ain't none of your concern. And so Kalina's sister was like, we all know what it is, evil sister. You may be sending some, but you're probably sending ten dollars a month. Is that? I 
was done with the little tell-all part one. That's it. What did you all think about it? Leave it down below. And y'all know what it do. To my new subscribers, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends, bye!